I'm Chance. And I'm Sarah Catherine. And this is Conservation Connection. Presented by Last Chance Endeavors. We are a husband and wife team running a wildlife education nonprofit. It's focused on connecting students to their environment. Each week, here on Conservation Connection, we do just that. Introducing you to the groundbreaking science and conservation work that's happening every day across the globe. We talk to professionals in the world of conservation science and wildlife management, and we ask them about their career, their current projects, their wild and crazy stories from the field, and everything in between. This episode is a collaboration with EarthX here in Dallas, Texas. EarthX is the largest Earth Day celebration in the world, and it brings in speakers from every corner of the environmental arena. Listen in to hear the stories of today's environmental titans, covering everything from environmental law, ocean health, renewable energy, clean transportation, and so much more. Let's get to the show. Alrighty, guys, welcome to another episode of Conservation Connection. We are here in Dallas, Texas for Earth X 2022, and we are so excited to be sitting down with the man himself, Trammell S. Crow, who is the founder and visionary behind this Earth X event. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. It's all happened because you guys came of your own accord, what, in 2019? 2019, 2019? Uh-huh. yeah. That was our first year at EarthX, and uh, we managed to nab, I think, 25 interviews in three days. And this year, this interview right now makes our 31st interview at this EarthX event. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Well, we cannot wait to see what happens for next year. But just for our listeners who may have never, unbelievably, I know, heard of EarthX, what is EarthX? How did it get started? And why did you want to do this? Okay. If they don't know about it, you know, our publicity has not been stellar over the years. And with EarthX TV, we're changing that. But I can't blame anybody for not knowing. Uh, Let me see. First, when I was... 12 years old, my brother came back from military school in his uniform for Thanksgiving, and I was looking up at him, and he taught me three words, environment, population, and politics. It was all new to me. Immediately, environment became the most important thing all my life, not that I've done too much over the years. Uh, And he forgot the first two words, but uh, (laughs) that's how it started. Then finally, when I retired... Uh, got involved with the business community or uh, rallied the business community to oppose TXU from going after 11 permits for coal, bad coal fire plants on a fast track approval basis. It was, you know, a train wreck. So I got a couple of business guys. We started Texas Business for Clean Air. First time that in Texas, clean and business had ever been in the same sentence, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, we helped defeat that train wreck. Then I thought, okay, this is the first step. Now there's the whole future of my life for environmental work. What will it be? And I decided to take the easy way out. Instead of doing a deep, deep thought and research, I said, what the hell? Earth Days in five months, we could do this. And so we <laughs> threw together a ragtag group of guys and uh, had 200 exhibitors. Not that Environmental Defense Fund ever thought of themselves as an exhibitor before. So it's so new. It's a hard sell. Schools, colleges, NGOs, of course, and government agencies. And uh, at the end of the three days, 40,000 people. We learned that was the biggest Earth Day in the, the world, 40,000 people in 200 exhibit. That really inspired us to keep on going. It's a clean playing field. I want to say one anecdote, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. On Sunday night, we were tearing down the booth in 2011, and one of my guys ran up to me and said, Trammell, Trammell, that NGO such and such, they were placed in the exhibit right next to a corporation. And I thought, heavens, this is terrible. <laughs> you know, with corporations, we got no problem with in Texas. You know, we right. only had clean corporations involved. So I ran over to the exhibitor. And I said, I am so sorry that you were placed like that. He said, Trammell, no, no, please. We've been trying to get to that corporation for 10 years. Thank you so much. Nice. So that was the very beginning when we realized we're creating something new. 
And that brings up a really cool thing about Earth X. Two things. One, it is the largest Earth Day celebration that I know of and probably in the world. Yep, right? It is. It's huge. I mean, literally a massive event with thousands and thousands of members of the public on top of that you've got thousands of experts coming together <laughs> and that's the whole point right is that you're bringing together people from very different points in the conversation and putting them side by side so that they can discuss and discussion leads to change the corporate sustainability oper- officers and corporations they need to hear the public the uh, scientists they some of them want to hear the public they never get to right other things that we've put together that, that are unique. It's so crazy to me that the ocean specialists have very little contact with, let's just say, uh, transportation. There's not a direct link, but there should be some links. So what happens here with the Ocean Conference, Innovation Investment Conference, uh, Farm and Ranch Conference, those disciplines, they meet the other disciplines. There's not a word for the excitement that they have. And for me, this is our second EarthX event that we've been to. I always leave. I, I'm not even here to watch the conferences. We're usually too busy recording podcasts to be able to sit in on the sessions. Right. But I still leave with this incredible sense that change is happening. It reinvigorates me just to be here and to listen to the stories of the people who who have come here to, to talk about what they're doing and to not only talk about, but to listen to other people who are working in the field of uh, anything connected to the green world. Yeah, absolutely. And we get the opportunity to talk to everyone and almost probably in every discipline that y'all have here at EarthX. So even though we don't get to sit in on the conferences and the sessions, I feel like we get like a private screening. That's you know? absolutely right. Yeah, we get somebody's ear for 20 to 30 minutes to ask them questions about what they're doing and to sort of amplify their communication of their work. Which the most heartwarming thing of all is when a grown man or woman, business person, comes to me and says, I had an epiphany. I never thought about the environment. And now, and the lesson there is we all have have it in us to want to save these things we're just ignorant you know so many people know nothing about the ocean so they're not going to help the ocean right so the value of the conferences and the expo is that in dallas texas nobody's ever heard this before we don't preach to the choir yeah yeah absolutely so EarthX, uh, what was the first year for EarthX, which was originally Earth Day, Texas? What was the first year you guys 2011. did 2011. Earth Day, Dallas. Earth Day, <laughs> Dallas. So, so uh, we had the good fortune to connect with you guys in 2019, and we were all set to come back and do some more podcasting in 2020. And that obviously didn't happen, right? COVID came in and it threw a wrench in the works. And I feel like over the last two years, EarthX has sort of reimagined what it sees its future to be. So can you tell me a little bit about what EarthX over the next couple of years is going to yeah, look like? Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, we need to do everything better. Uh, the conferences didn't start until the fourth or fifth year, just Expo. So we started kind of one conference, the first, second, the second year two. There are 14 conferences. So finding new verticals for new conferences. We've never done a transportation conference, for instance. Right. I'm so excited about wildlife conservation. I'm going to say something that your viewers might not like. In 1937, I think it was, there was a bill passed that required hunting licenses. People had to pay. Never happened before. Those monies went into conservation of national parks and and preserves and so forth. I'm not a hunter. Frankly, I don't like it. But I've worked with hunters all over America. I've met with hunters about every 10 days for the last four years. (laughs) And it's amazing. Well, first of all, you have to drink and smoke and cuss. (laughs) (laughs) The first requirements. But the work they do today about a guy that has 20,000 acre farm in in Kansas, 50% of the land, he does not farm it. Wow. Completely leaves it wild for conservation purposes. So wildlife conservation through hunting and fishing is uh, counterintuitive. But that's one of the things that's uh, growing. 
those conservationists come to this event, and they might even cuss in the parking lot and say, why am I going this damn Earth Day thing? <laughs> but it rubs off on them. We've absolutely found that the hunting and angling community, they're the ones who spend the most time outside, and they really have yeah. a heart for the mm -hmm. outdoor world, and not only for themselves, but an intent to pass on their culture, their their recreation to their children and their children's children, right? Not everybody, but the majority of them are true. Yeah. They're some of the most passionate people, honestly, that we've had on this show about conservation. And we've interviewed some on here on Conservation Connection and have always really had a great experience. And I do appreciate and really love that part of EarthX that you allow this space for everyone to come and be involved. You don't say like, oh, will you hunt? Well, no, of course you can't be here because they have a place at this table. The prices of everything so expensive that they can do that. Students come in, student tours. Well, we had the United Nations Global Youth Summit here. And we actually got the opportunity to speak with people who were involved with the United Nations or climate negotiators for the, some of these big like COP26 meetings that have happened over the past few years. If you're listening and you're trying to figure out what all we're going to have coming down the pipeline over the next couple of weeks here with all of these episodes we've recorded at EarthX, uh, we've had some really cool names in youth negotiation that we got to interview. We got to speak with Moana Pacifica, who is the rugby team yeah. that EarthX sponsors. Right. And we, that's such a cool story coming down the line. We got to speak with Texas Beer Company, who's doing sustainable brewing. We got to speak with Chief Tashka of the Yawanawa tribe and all the work that he's doing to protect the indigenous rights and, and the land in the Amazon in Brazil. So this is, I mean, there is nowhere else that we could go for a week and talk to such a diverse group of people about the work they're doing to protect our planet. And the inimitable Paul Watson. And yes. Paul Watson, which is a huge name. Sea Shepherd, I'm sure. you. If you're listening to the show, you absolutely know who Paul Watson is. He's uh, He's been working in the field of direct action for conservation for 45 years at this point. I think he's come to four, to the event four years now. Yeah, that's really awesome. So just as a sneak preview before we wrap up here, do you have any tidbits of what our listeners can potentially expect for next year's EarthX? Yeah, we uh, are going to have an expo that's three or four times larger. Many of the same conferences. There'll be some new conferences, philanthropy. Awesome. We'll have a lot more politicians because of the election cycle. Right. And then Earth X TV, which you might be able to describe better now because I don't watch TV. But <laughs> in the same way that nobody's seriously doing Earth Day but us, there is not a TV network out there that's all environment. Right. And so it's a clear playing field. And uh, we're going to go nowhere but up. If somebody else wants to start a channel, that's great. Well, I just can't wait till we have... Sometime this year, we'll launch the the Daily Extreme Weather Report. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I love weather, so I will be looking out for that one. And for our listeners, um, if you are interested in learning more about EarthX TV, we also had some interviews with some of the people who work with EarthX TV through EarthX. And we also interviewed Lawrence Carr and Shona Smith, who both have shows on EarthX TV. So those episodes will be coming. And we really enjoyed uh, hearing about those shows and are very excited to watch more. Yeah. And if you're listening to Conservation Connection, I'm going to assume you're interested in environmentally based content in general. So if you guys would like to check out some of the shows that EarthX TV is putting out, you guys can go to earthxtv.com or you can scroll down to the show notes. I'm going to drop that link right there. You guys can click on it. Go watch for free. Uh, that doesn't require a login or a sign up or anything. You can watch the content for free right now. Well, Trammell, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. It was a great episode, and we're using this to open our season so our listeners can enjoy hearing the rest of our EarthX content throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you all for coming, and y'all come back. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for listening to this episode of Conservation Connection. If you enjoyed our podcast, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you catch every episode that we post. We'd love to hear from you. So if you want to reach out, go to our website, lastchanceendeavors.com backslash contact and shoot us an email. We love questions from our listeners. So if you heard something that you want to know more about, be sure to let us know. 
If you've got a minute to spare, leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts will help other conservation-minded people find the show. We'd really appreciate it. A big thanks to the people working to protect our planet, and a big thanks to you for listening. Don't forget to tune in next week.